lost. With 241 Republicans, we got 210. If we can't even get rid of the union payroll deduction, we got a long way to go before we can do what Wisconsin did. But that is the path to prosperity. It lowers the cost of our goods and does a number of things, but I should shut up so we can get to the next question. Who's next on deck? Now, for those, it's 7.30. For those of you who, who, who want to leave, I want to value your time. I'm going to, since I spoke for 10 minutes too long, if y'all are willing, I'm going to stay 10 or 15 minutes too long. <laughs> uh, I may regret that when else I hear his question, but right now, I admit that. Um, I just want to know, you know, if the Republicans really have a serious plan to, to get going once, you know, once this fight starts on the 2012, and are they really willing to really mean it this time? Yes, sir. And are they willing to have that fight and get ugly for a little while? Because it's not going to be pretty any way we do it, so we might as well go ahead and get it over with. Yeah, I, I'll tell you, the, the answer is yes, we are serious, or at least the conservatives in Congress are serious. But I will tell you that it's going to be an ugly fight, period. There's just no way to cut bad programs only. You have to cut the good ones, too. We are getting ready to have a melee that we haven't seen in the public forum in a very long time. Our president said he was interested in entitlement reform, but did not include his interest in his budget. We have to do something about entitlement reform. And I'm scared to death, frankly, to have the conversation with some of my seniors, because every time you start the conversation, people think I'm talking about those who are currently on the system. And there's just no way for the Democrats not to demagogue the issue and demonize Republicans for starting the conversation. But the fact of the matter is, if we don't start it now, we don't have a country. And so that's why my asterisk is up there. It simply says, if you're 55 or 56 or older, we're not talking about you. But the rest of us have to go through a painful process of becoming less dependent on something that we felt perhaps entitled to. I'm OK with that. And so you will hear that coming out of the Republican conference. I'm at the leadership table. I'm fighting for it every day. I'm simply suggesting that if we don't do it now, we don't do it ever. There is a third of the conference, the Republican conference, that don't want, they don't want anything to do with this whole conversation. They'll be going home. Uh, because they think that they, they, I mean, I give them credit. They, they think that this is a bad fight to pick, and I agree with them, but there's no other chance, there's no other time to pick it. So it's not something I want to fight about, to be honest with you. I just don't have any choice. I saw Chloe. There she is. Congressman Scott, first I'd like to thank you. Uh, I think uh, we need more like you in Thanks. the Congress. Um, <clears throat> you did answer my question. I yes, asked, uh, my question was, when are you going to get serious about what's the so-called mandatory spending, which is the biggest chunk of the yes, non-budget? And I want to let you know, I'm close to retirement age. I yes, mean, sir. But don't keep me out. I mean, if I have to work till I'm 75, I'd rather, if Work is only work if you'd rather be doing something else. So, you know, I'd like to help. So, you know, you, your statement that says, if you're within 10 years of retirement age, we're not going to touch you. Yes, sir. Uh, ask us. You know, I want to help. Um, I plan on living until I'm 95. Okay. So, all right. Well, thank you, sir. Well received, sir. Thank you for the courage to say so. Uh, happy to talk with you about that. And uh, hey, I'm, my Social Security retirement uh, think tank is going to start in April, May time frame. Uh, and so those of you who are, who are interested in giving me real advice and willing to take this war on together, let's do it. Either way, I, I have to go forward. Y'all don't have to do this. But if you want to get involved, I need your help. Uh, I am not the genesis of great ideas. I wish I was. I'm not. You all are. The best ideas I've ever implemented, Ms. Curry, in all my years of public office have come from someone else nine out of 10 times. Because our citizens have the most amazing ideas if we give them the floor. And I will now. Bob? Who's after her? Is Joan here? Yes, she's back here. Oh, there she is. Hey, how you doing? OK, good. Bob, sir. I believe Tim Scott's psychic. What else can we do to support the repeal of Obamacare as citizens? 
I tell you, you guys, have, you guys are, you guys are why we are where we are today. The political will was absent. The political will was absent. It was the citizens who decided enough was enough, and have put us in a place where our first bill was to repeal Obamacare. My first action on the floor as a manager was to repeal a part of Obamacare. And I had a lengthy conversation, making sure I had my facts right today before I came in front of you all to have this discussion about Obamacare specifically. And what they told me that the best shot we have at dismantling Obamacare is to line item the budgets in HHS and the IRS that are trying to move the money around now, since they don't have the money, they're trying to move the money around to start the implementation process. There are mandatory spending that is already done, that we have to repeal, but there's a lot of discretionary spending that is necessary to fund the initial acts of parts of Obamacare. Without action on all three levers of government, it doesn't happen. We can strangle them piece by piece until we get a new president and a new Senate. And then we need 60 in the Senate to repeal it. This is a long road. The best shot we have is having you all actively engaged in fighting this good fight. Because what they expect, and this is, this, I could be wrong, but what they expect is for conservatives who have to actually work for the living to get tired of this issue. <laughs> Guarantee you. I'm just telling you what they expect. What they expect. And, and I will tell you, if you and for those of us who are cynics, not all of us are cynics, but some of y'all are. I can tell you, I met, I met some of y'all. Y'all are cynics. <laughs> Let me just tell you, okay? Here, here's what we need to do, honestly. Pay attention to the president's approval ratings as they climb in the worst economic times ever. He's good. He's good. If conservatives stay on the job, we win. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Tim. Good to see Hello. you again. So proud of you. Thank you, ma'am. Um, I wanted to ask you what your opinion is with zero uh, sum budgeting, making every agency prove every dollar they spend every year. I, I love the idea. I love it so much. Zero-based budgeting, which is a phenomenal concept that we used on county council. It would work in America's big halls, not of justice, but of spending. I am a co-sponsor on a zero-based budgeting bill that hopes to, to encourage us to say, you don't get what you got last year. You get zero until you prove the rest of it. Uh, I'm a co-sponsor of it. We're fighting for it, but I'm just telling you, it's a uh, it's just crazy. There's no common sense, but we're going to keep pushing. Keep pushing it. Yes, sir. Who's next? Joe? Uh, thank you, Tim. John Mark Coop, Mount Pleasant. Uh, I almost wanted to jump up when you were explaining that so ably and so well to say, since your fearless leaders up there don't seem to be willing to go out and do what you just did there, and it was wonderful, why don't they send you out? They, they have on a couple of occasions. I tell you what, it hurts. <laughs> I, mean, it, I mean, seriously, I, I've been hammered by all kinds of stations. and yeah, You've done a wonderful job I explaining it, but I, we, our feeling is that Boehner and the rest of them are not explaining it. We don't know what they're doing. Yeah. Sir, I, I arrived. I told, them, I told them about two weeks ago, and I, I said this sincerely. Y'all can fire me if you want to. Because what we're doing to the American people from a communication strategy is terrible. Yeah. Amen. And, and I, I preface that with the comment that I got elected to leadership. I'm happy to resign, quit, or get fired. But people don't understand what we are not telling them. Conservatives. Sir? I, I trust me, and my only medium, medium for that media outlet is Fox for the most part, but even if they don't have the facts, they, they go with what that we give them. So, sir, it's, it's, a, it's a war, and I'm happy to have the war. I'm happy to be the spokesperson for the war because I'm dumb enough to think that if we don't do it now, we'll never get it done. I'm okay with that. Uh, and uh, 
they tell me to be patient. I'm not very patient. You may have you may have noticed you may have noticed that that was not my question, but <laughs> which is that now that you've been up in Washington for several months, uh, what's your advice to us about what we can do to help you? I, I tell you, your phone calls matter. Here's what a politician is afraid of. A voter. <laughs> I'm serious. Hey, the reason why we're having this meeting tonight is because of three or four of y'all in the room. Who, we didn't get the facts before we made the decisions, and I want to make sure that, hey, if, if, I'm, if I'm wrong, let me stand before the crowd and just apologize. I'm okay with that. But let's deal with the same facts, and when the facts were not accurate, I said, Let's just get together. So, me too, I'm afraid of the voters. I want to have a conversation with my bosses. You guys are the boss, and people want to sell, sell some other concept. You are the bosses. Jim, I call you every couple of weeks. If, I, if I'm stuck in a corner and I want the most conservative opinion and perspective, I call either Mr. Richard Corbin or I call Jim Davis to get the, oh, all right. And Richard is pretty black and white. I mean, you gotta, you gotta really be doing something wrong to misunderstand him. Next question. Poor Jim, I know, <laughs> I have to call him all the time. Jim, Jim, Richard? You mentioned earlier that, that you're expecting a melee when you get down to the nitty gritty of cutting spending. Yes, sir. What will you do if our nation's capitol building should become occupied by protesters, as was the Wisconsin state capitol. If spending is cut as it should be, this may result. Praise the Lord. <laughs> hey, I'm afraid of the voter, but I ain't afraid of nobody. I mean, show up. I mean, sincerely, I mean, they, they, they protested in my office in Myrtle Beach because of some, what was it, union thing or something? I recommend them come see me. I mean, I'm easy along. I get along easy. I'm an easy guy to get along with. Just don't touch me. We're in good shape, right? <laughs> so they can all show up. God bless them. God bless them all. I don't mind. They have the right to protest. They have the right to be wrong, is what my pastor says. <laughs> I don't say that with arrogance. I say that sincerely. I, I think we ought to have the most public fights over things like unions and the destruction of the, of the automobile industry in America because of unions. I'm happy to talk about the destruction of our education system because people have tenure and can't get fired. Every day of every week, let's have that conversation on TV. Yeah. Invite me. <laughs> Sincerely, that, that's the kind of fight I like to have. That, that's the philosophical war that we win. We win that one. Am I done? Or we got two more? Ms. Barbara? That's great to find yeah. Michelle Bachman? Yes, ma'am. With her really uh, saying this $105 billion was part, part of it, where did she not get her same information that you did? <laughs> did I ask for one more question? <laughs> I mean, did I really say Barbara instead of going to the list? <laughs> Joe, you're in charge of this place, man. <laughs> He told me, hey, he told me earlier this day, Tim, 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 don't be, don't get relaxed and just ask questions from the audience, man. <laughs> Follow the process. <laughs> My bad. My bad. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, hey, listen, I don't have an answer for, for anybody besides Tim Scott. The fact of the matter is, if you do the work, there's no way to find $105 billion of spending in the current resolution for Obamacare. You can't even find it for health care. It is impossible to find. I have talked on the phone today, all day, 
with budget experts on both sides of the aisle to make sure I get this part right. Because this part has cost me a lot of sleepless nights in the last 10 days. Absolutely. Weeks, yes, ma'am. And, and my first thought was, well, there's some reason. Let him tell us what the reason is. I appreciate you being patient. I will tell you this, that I am one of 47 Congress members out of 435 that have voted for every single cut we have been presented with. Out of 435 of us, 47 have voted for every single cut. I'm looking for them. I'm voting for every, if it's cutting my mama's income, I'm going to supplement it anyway. <laughs> I'm going to cut it. Since, uh, I mean, seriously, I'm going to cut it. I cut everything. The right side, the left side, conservative, liberal, we don't need it. I'm not cutting my, one the young man in the back says he's willing to cut social, I'm not willing to cut social security, I'm not willing to cut Medicare. I'm willing to cut the waste out of Medicare, but I'm not willing to cut the benefits, and I'm not willing to cut defense. Medicaid, Obamacare, discretionary spending, my salary, everything on the table. Those are three years I'm not cutting. I'm not cutting benefits for current seniors, period. I'll cut the waste. I'm not cutting the benefits. I'm not cutting the military. Everything else is on the table. And if you can find another source or call Michelle Bachman's office and ask for $105 billion and have her fax it to you or email it to you or text it to you, please let me know. And I will come right back here and apologize. Well, we really appreciate your doing this. Because that makes yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So take a look at that. And on that final note, I will tell you that when you look at that, Ms. Barbara, you'll find you know, $10, $15 billion, billion dollars of spending on health care programs. And I want to make sure that I articulate it again before you walk out. $5 billion are for high-risk pools that were in existence before there was an Obamacare. And if we're going to have pre-existing conditions covered somewhere, we are going to have to help a little bit. The, the Republican alternative, Mr. King, hey, Bob, good to see you back there, Mrs. King. The Republican alternative includes pre-existing conditions. And I'm okay with that. Some of us are not okay with that, but I'm okay with having a portion of it covered so that we can keep it in the free market so they can find their health insurance through Blue Cross Blue Shield and not Uncle Sam. And so the other part of it is the pre-retirement part, which for, 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 for purposes of clarity, got a little color code for us. And then this tells you what is in this year's spending. Pre early retiree reinsurance program. Rating upside down is not my expertise. $5 billion. $6 billion for some consumer health care stuff that we were doing before there was an Obamacare. So all that will be enveloped into Obamacare, but the question is, can you find $105 billion in this current resolution? You, if you can find $20 billion or $30 billion, let me know. I couldn't find it. It needs to be addressed in the whole budget, yes, but it needs to be addressed in the whole budget for the next seven budget cycles. Because the spending that happens, not to, like in 2014, when Obamacare actually is supposed to be fully implemented, we start seeing spending around 12 or 19 or 20 billion dollars in 2014. 2014, 19 billion dollars for the program called CHIPS which is Children's Health Insurance Program that already exists since the Bush years, that will be enveloped into Obamacare, but it is, in fact, a future spending of 2014. So not next year or the following year's budget, but the third year's budget. And then the following year, you see another $21 billion. You add all these seven years or eight years of budgets together, you get to your $105 billion. You can't get there in one year. You can't get there in two or three or four or five. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Hey, we, 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 we are officially over. Thank you, Sam Lusky, for praying for us. And thank you all for coming. I'll be happy to walk around and chat for a few minutes. Thank you. OK, I'll do some press this first. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm 77. Yes, ma'am.